What's going on guys? So in this video, we are going to be creating a more complicated triangle in Python. So in the first two videos, we first created a left right triangle, then we created a right right triangle. Now this next triangle is going to be more regular triangle, or maybe a equilateral slash isosceles triangle. So if that's confusing, don't worry, we're going to take a look at the output and you get a much clearer understanding of what I'm talking about. So let's just run the Python program. And this is the output. So it looks more like a, a regular triangle. Now, there's a few things you want to notice that are different from the previous triangles. So the first thing is the amount of slots that each row takes up. So in the previous video, you'll notice that each row took up n slots, or where n represented the total amount of rows for your triangle. So for example, in the first row, we had n slots. So we had four spaces and one asterisk if n was equal to 5. In the second row, you had three spaces and two asterisks, if once again n was equal to 5. So n dictated the amount of slots in each row. Now here it's going to be a little bit different. Each row is going to have a variable amount of items or slots, as opposed to the previous one where the amount of items or slots in each row was dictated by n. So that's one thing you want to notice. So if you look at the row 1 and row 2, you'll notice that row 1, the asterisk is in between the two asterisks of row 2. So the row 1 asterisk is aligned with the empty space in between the two asterisks. Now if you look at row 2 and row 3, you'll notice that the two asterisks of row 2 are aligned with the empty spaces in between the asterisks of row 3 and etc. So this is going to be a lot more complicated than our previous examples. So the first thing we want to tackle is how many elements or slots or items are in each row. And the easiest way to do that is from the bottom, because if you start from the top, it's hard to tell how many spaces precede the first asterisk. So now let's look at the last row. So the last row has five asterisks, because the number we inputted into our script was five. So the base of the triangle has five asterisks. Now, in addition to asterisks, there are also spaces in between the asterisks. So let's see, we have one asterisk followed by space, then we have another 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 asterisk. So if we count that, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So for a row with five asterisks, we have nine elements. Now if we look at the above row, we have four asterisks and three spaces. Now for the time being, we're ignoring the preceding spaces. We're going to be starting from the asterisk and then counting the elements or the slots in the row. So once again, we're ignoring the preceding spaces. So if you look at the second row from the bottom, we have an asterisk followed by space, followed by asterisk, followed by space, followed by asterisk, space, asterisk. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for four asterisks, we have seven total elements. And for five asterisks, we have nine total elements. So if you guys notice, there's a pattern going on. So let's take a look at the pattern. Okay, so for five asterisks, we have four spaces. So five minus one equals four, and the total elements will be nine. Now for four asterisks, we have three spaces. So to get three, it's just four minus one, and that gives us a total of seven. So basically, the formula is going to be the amount of asterisks plus asterisk minus one. Alright, don't mind the spelling, but basically that's the formula. So to get the amount of elements or slots in a row, it's going to be asterisks plus asterisks minus one. So if we look at the third row from the bottom, there's three asterisks and there's two spaces. So three minus one is two, and now we add them, three plus two, which will equal five. Okay, so we have the formula to get the amount of elements in each row. So the first row has one element, and one minus one will equal zero, so there's only one element. The second row has two asterisks, two minus one will equal one, so two plus one will equal three. So the second row will have three elements, two asterisks and one empty space. So that's the general formula. Now, all we need to do is calculate the spaces preceding each asterisk. So let's start from the bottom again. The fifth row has zero spaces. So let's just write that. Now the fourth row has one space. 
Now row 3 will have 2 spaces, row 2 will have 3 spaces, and the first row will have 4 spaces. So hopefully you guys are sort of seeing a pattern here. Remember, we need to try to create a formula. So row 5 has 0 spaces, and our n, which stands for total amount of rows, is 5. Now row 4 has 1 space. Our n, total amount of rows, is 5, and row 4 is 4. So if you see the pattern, basically, it's n minus row. So for the row 5, we have 5 minus 5, which results in 0 spaces. For row 4, it's 5 minus 4. Remember, 5 is the total amount of rows. Minus 4 will equal 1. Now for row 3, it's 5 minus 3 will equal 2 spaces. So that's it. So now we figured out the amount of spaces preceding each asterisk, and we figured out the amount of elements as well. So the amount of elements is equal to the row number plus row minus 1. So everything except for one part has been solved. And this last part consists of the alternation between asterisks and spaces. So one thing you'll notice is that we always start off with an asterisk. So we'll start with an asterisk, and then in the next iteration, if there is a next iteration, it will be a space. So if you look at the first row, there's one asterisk, no iteration afterwards. So we go to the next row. We once again start with asterisk, and then if there's another iteration, we follow by an asterisk. So we always start off with an asterisk, and every alternate iteration, it's a space. So if the first iteration is, say, an even number, then the spaces will be the odd numbered iteration. So let's just take a closer look at what I mean. As we iterate through the first row, so the first iteration is going to be the zero third iteration, and that's going to be an asterisk. So let's take a look at the second row, because the first row was kind of simple. So the first iteration will be zero, the zero third iteration, and that will be an asterisk. The first iteration will be the number one, which will be an odd number, which will be a space, and then the second iteration, which will be an even number, will be asterisk. Now let's take a look at row number three. Row number three will be, once again, the zeroth iteration will be an asterisk, first iteration a space, second an asterisk, third a space, fourth an asterisk. So you'll see that the even numbered iterations are going to be an asterisk, and the odd number iterations are going to be spaces. So now we have all three components to tackle the problem. The first thing we needed to solve was the amount of elements per row, which we calculated with row plus row minus 1, so the fifth row, which we calculated as 5 plus 5 minus 1, which is 4, so 4 plus 5 equals 9. So those are the amount of elements. Then we needed to calculate the amount of spaces preceding each asterisk. And the way we did that is n minus row. So if we're on the fifth row, we do n minus row, which is 5 minus 5, which will equal 0 spaces. If we're on the fourth row, it's n minus rho, which is n minus 4, which equals 1. And then finally, we're going to be iterating through range elements. So for example, the fifth row, we're going to be iterating through nine different elements because the fifth row has nine different elements. So we'll iterate through range nine. And if the iteration number is odd, we'll print a space. And if it's an even, we'll print an asterisk. So now we're going to take a look at the final code. So let me just bring over, there we go. All right, so what we can do is we'll get rid of this and we'll comment out this as well. Okay. And we'll uncomment this. All right, so let's just run this. So as you can see, the output is a triangle. Now let's take a look at the code. It's basically everything we covered in the Python shell. So let me bring that side to side. All right. So the for row in range 1, 2, n plus 1. So this is just calculating the amount of rows. So remember, the tricky part with range is to get the nth iteration, you have to create a range of n plus 1. So if we want to go from 1 to n, uh, the last number so the last offset should be n plus 1 because the way that range works is you only iterate to the last number minus 1. So since we want n iterations, we have to do n plus 1, especially because we're starting from 1. So we're going to get n iterations starting from 1 by going from 1 to n plus 1. All right, so that calculates the row. Now remember, to calculate the start index, we did n, which is the total amount of rows, minus the current row. So if you look at the bottom here on the right, row 5 will have 0 spaces because n minus 5 will equal 0. So the start index, or the amount of spaces that will precede uh, row 5 will be 0. So that's how we calculate the amount of spaces to precede each row.
All right, so we have the rows, then we have the amount of spaces that precede each row. So in the next iteration, we need to calculate two things. First, the amount of elements. Now remember, to calculate the amount of elements, we need to calculate row plus row minus one. So the fifth row will have five rows plus row minus one, which will go four. So total will be nine. So we'll have nine different elements. Now you'll notice here that I'm not going up to 10. This is because we're starting from zero. So if we go from zero to eight, that'll be eight different elements. So once again, remember range usually starts off with zero and it goes up to, in this case, row plus row minus one. So the last iteration of range will be one minus the number you input. But since we're starting with zero, it doesn't matter. We'll still get the same amount of iterations. So the amount of iterations we want to get are row plus row minus one. So for the first row, we'll have one plus one minus one, which equals zero. So we'll have one iteration. For the second a row, you'll have row plus row minus one, which is going to be a two plus two minus one, which will be three. All right, so we're getting the amount of iterations per row correctly. And the amount of iterations translates to the amount of elements per row. So we have that. Now remember, the last part was to determine if we're going to print out a star or a space. And all the even iterations are going to be printing out stars or asterisks. And the odd iterations are going to be printing out spaces. Now the way to check if something is odd or even is you can do a modulo 2. So if you look at this modulo with 2, if something is divisible by 2, the remainder should be 0. If something is not divisible by 2, the remainder will be 1. And that's how we determine odds or evens. If after being divided by 2, the remainder is 0, we know that's an even number. And if the remainder is 1, we know that's an odd number. So if star modulo 2 equals 0, that's an odd number, we print an asterisk. Else, we print an empty space. And that is it. We've tackled all four parts necessary to create a star pyramid, and we've put them together in a cohesive function. And now, as you can see, if we run this, we'll get the desired output. So I've inputted 7, so we should get back 7. All right, so here we have a seven road triangle. All right, so that's it with this video. If you have comments and questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.